Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and today I thought I'd make this quick video on the Cholinergic Urticaria Cure Checklist. Now what this video is, is it's just a summary of all the things that I've done which allowed me to cure my Cholinergic Urticaria in the sense that I don't have the symptoms and as long as I stay with everything on this page then I pretty much can live my life without worrying about hives and the attack of hives and all that. It's not a cure in the sense that it's just gone forever no matter what. I, you know, when I eat certain things or when I, you know, if I don't stick to most of the regimen on this page, then my hives can come back and I've even went off my diet and so forth a little bit and I began to get a little bit of a prickly sensation again. And that's always a signal for me that I need to clean it up and go back to my diet. So when I say cure, it's more of a cure of just by doing these certain things, I can pretty much eliminate my symptoms. But before I get started, just let me say that I'm not a doctor, so everything I'm going to say on this page, you always need to talk to your doctor before trying it, before, you know, that includes over-the-counter lotion, medication, anything. Always just talk to your doctor to make sure it's safe for you specifically. And I'll also say that it's quite possible that there may be different subsets or different causes for cholinergic urticaria, so I'm not guaranteeing this is going to work for everyone. It worked for me. And I would strongly advise you to at least consider trying it under a doctor's supervision to see if it helps. And so this video is going to be rather long probably because there's a lot of things I want to cover. This is everything pretty much that I've ever tried that I feel has had maybe some small impact. So here we go. Let's get started. First of all, I want to talk about the skin care that I do. And before, let me back up just a second. Before I get started, let me say all this stuff that I'm about to mention the biggest things that I feel works or helps me is number one, the diet. And when I say diet, I mean what I'm eating and also the quantity of foods I'm eating. And the second thing that I feel that helps me the most is the exercise. And then all the rest of this, the things I'm going to mention in this video together, I also do feel I get a benefit from that as well. But I'll just tell you everything. Okay, starting with skincare. First of all, you want to keep your fingernails short, and this is just common sense because when you get a hives attack, if you have long nails, you can damage your skin or leave welts or scratch marks on you. So to me, it always helped to kind of have short fingernails when I did have hives. So that's just a little tip. Okay, shower temperature. I try to take a little bit cooler showers now. It doesn't have to be ice cold, but the hotter the water is, the more dissolved minerals sometimes there is in it. So I try to take showers that are a little bit more on the cool side than just, you know, steaming hot and sitting there and letting that hot, all those minerals absorb into your skin for, you know, 15, 30 minutes. The next thing is I got a shower filter. I bought one. I think it was the Culligan brand. It was like $15 on Amazon.com. It's, um, you know, it didn't require any fancy tools. I just installed it in like five or 10 minutes on my shower. It's really easy, I think. Just about anyone can do it. Maybe you just need like a pair of pliers or a wrench or something. It's really easy. And I did that and I changed the filter out every six months. And what that does, it just removes some of the chlorine and minerals from the water and keeps my skin from drying out as much, which I always felt like when my skin was drier, it would inflame my cholinergic urticaria. So I stay on top of my skin now and keep it in better shape. As far as soap and shampoo, I use a hypoallergenic moisturizing soap. It's by Dove. You can buy it pretty much anywhere, Amazon.com, or you can also buy it usually in like Walmart or, you know, pharmacy or wherever. But I recommend you use a hypoallergenic soap, in my opinion. And I would avoid any kind of abrasive scrubs and, you know, any soaps with any kind of like fragrances and all that because it could be irritating your body a little bit. Um, shower frequency. You know, I usually don't take more than one shower a day, so you don't want to dry your skin out too much with that. I try to use a soft cottony towel when I get out. Um, I use lotion immediately when I get out of the shower. I use Eucerin calming cream. It's really good lo lotion. I rec I've rec recommended it in a couple videos, and I recommend it extensively on my website. I use it, and I think it's just great lotion. It's really uh, if you look at the reviews on Amazon across the board, it has phenomenal reviews for things like eczema and hives and so forth. Now, it's not going to cure your hives, but what it did for me, it would keep my skin moisturized and keep it feeling cooler longer. So that would always help. And like I said, I feel like when the skin gets dry, it kind of does inflame cholinergic urticaria a little bit. So I definitely do that. And during the winter time, I usually hit that lotion up all over my body, even on my face. It doesn't cause it's on my face, by the way. Um... I have a clear complexion, even though I put this stuff on my face like every day. But anyway, 
I put it on two times a day when it's really dry and the humidity is really low in the winter time. In the summertime, I usually just do a real thin layer about once a day. Also, in the winter time, I use a, a humidifier. You can also use a vaporizer, same thing. But that just, again, it helps put a little bit of humidity in the air. And I especially do that when I'm working out sometimes because, you know, it helps me just, just to make sure that I go right into sweating. I don't have to deal with hives at all. And, you know, some people who have hives can even use this strategy to help them sweat quicker. So another thing, I use hypoallergenic detergent for my clothes. And the brand is by All, A-L-L, -L, that's the brand. And it's just the hypoallergenic brand. It costs like $4, I think. It's not very expensive. And that's what I use. And, you know, my wife usually likes the scented stuff, but she's she uses this now. And so I wash all my clothes in that. I feel like detergents and things like that, it's a good idea not to use the extra chemicals in them because they could be, you know, at, at the very least, they could be making your culinary degree to carry a little bit worse. And then the last thing I would mention on this skincare list is just to be aware of products. Anytime you put anything on your skin, you know, for ladies, if you're putting makeup, if you're using facial cleansers, if you're um, putting lotion on your skin, Anything that you put on your skin, make sure that it's not going to make your culinary degree to carry it worse or that it could even be a, a cause of some inflammation in your body, which is causing your hives. So, you know, stop and sort of take an inventory of everything you put on your skin and say, you know, is this, is this okay for my skin? You may even want to consider backing off of it for a while. Now, I do use deodorant, and so I've never had a problem with that. Now my hives are gone, so I don't think that deodorant was a problem for me, but they also make some hypoallergenic detergents. I mean, I'm sorry, deodorants that you can use if you're worried about that. Okay, environmental care. Now this is a list for things I've done in my environment to try to make my hives stay in remission. First of all, I got dust mite covers for my bed, and I would strongly recommend this because, you know, you can get dust mites and they're a leading cause of household allergies that can make asthma, skin condition, eczema, all sorts of things worse. I bought some covers that were made of like just a hyperallergenic material. At first I bought some vinyl covers because they were the cheapest, but when I got them home, they absolutely stunk horrendously when I put them on my bed and I could not sleep. I was, and I actually took them off that night and um, went back to the store the next day and got a different kind that didn't have such an odor. And also some people suggest that, that vinyl gases from the plastic can actually cause like cancer or something like that. I don't know if it's true, but it's stuck enough anyway for me not to worry with it, so it didn't matter. But I would recommend you get some uh, pillow covers and something for your bed to do the dust mites and wash your sheets regularly maybe like once a week or at least once every two weeks for sure in that hypoallergenic detergent I mentioned earlier. The next thing is seasonal allergies. You know, if you have any kind of allergy outdoors like pollen or if you have, you know, pets or anything like that. You know, I love pets to death just like anyone else, but I don't own pets in my own home. I, you know, I love dogs. My mom has like four or five dogs inside her house and I've lived with them my whole life, but my philosophy is I love pets, but they're not really made to cohabitate with humans because, you know, you get hair in your food, you get hair everywhere, and they go outside and get all sorts of, you know, dust and debris on them, and that's just really not good for your health. So if you're kind of on the fence about getting a pet, I'd probably recommend you probably not do it. If you do have a pet, try to keep it as clean as possible and, you know, maybe clean your house a little more often to cut down on the dust mite and pet dander and all that. And so that's the best tips I can give on environmental things. Okay, now for clothing, here's a few tips on clothing that, I, that I've done that helped me. I avoid excessive detergent. And again, you know, I just use a hypoallergenic detergent and I would strongly recommend that. Why not? You know, it's not going to hurt and it'll be something that will ensure that the detergent's not the cause. I wear th uh, thin clothing, and this was especially important when I had hives, but... You know, I would, would always wear just really thin t-shirts made of cotton or, you know, really thin jeans or shorts. When I did go out on a cold day or something and I had to wear a jacket or hoodie, I tried to get something that zipped up. And when I went into a warm building, I would just take it off really quickly. And that kind of helps your body adapt. But, you know, that's especially important, like I said, if you're still struggling with hives. And also another thing with clothing is that the colors matter. Whenever I would go out and it's summertime, 
I would not wear like a black hat or black shirt or dark colored shirt because that just absorbs the sun rays and it makes your body heat up even that much more quickly. And so if you're struggling with hives and just warm in your area or you're going outside, wear something like a light pastel color or white or yellow or something that kind of reflects the sun's lights off, light off of you. And that'll help keep you a little cooler. And again, wear, try to avoid thick hats because a lot of your body heat escapes from your head and also your feet. Wear thin socks as well because that's where a lot of your body heat escapes. So if you wear a really thick hat or really thick socks, then that's again going to aid to making your body get warmer quicker. And that, as you know, will cause hives. So also wear comfortable fabrics. Like I said, I'd wear like cotton clothes and soft fabrics. I don't like itchy feeling stuff. I've had enough itching itchiness on my skin so I don't like woolly you know stiff starchy feeling fabrics I just don't wear them and uh, some people have mentioned that moisture wick shirts help I've never tried them myself but they're supposed to be a little bit cooler and so forth or they can help absorb sweat or pull the sweat out of the pores some people suggest so they're not going to cure cholinergic or to carry but they may help a little bit more with the comfort Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about diet now. I'm not going to go too in depth, or I'm going to try not to, because I'm going to. I plan to make a separate video. But basically, what I did with my diet, I had a lot of, like I said at the beginning of the video, I had a lot of, you know, problems with my stomach and issues over the years. And I feel like the biggest thing that's contributed to curing my colonic urticaria is my diet. And what I mean, like I said, is both the foods I eat and the quantity of food I eat. Because ultimately, how I kind of view it now is that the foods I, were, I was eating had minor things in them that would inflame my immune system a little bit. But each little food that I ate that my immune system did not seem to have a problem with would just compound the problem. And so all the, say like I had five foods in my diet that were really causing me a problem. Well, all those five together were inflaming my body to the point where my hives were just getting out of control. When I started to really cut down on the common allergens out there and I started to really watch my diet closely, that's when things changed, okay? And it took about two weeks, and even to this day, if I eat something that I know tears up my stomach or upsets my immune system a little bit, it takes about a week to get back to where I'm just at baseline again, where I don't feel any inflammation in my body, I don't have hives, I don't itch or anything like that. So, you know, I could go out, for example, and eat a pizza. I might start getting a little prickly the next day or two after doing that. And it's going to probably take me about a week or maybe even up to two weeks to get completely out of my system to where my immune system, everything comes back down and my hives disappear again. So here's what I do with my food. Basically, I try to eat all healthy foods. I've never been like a, one of these like health nuts, but, you know, I would eat junk food. But basically now... I can't because most of the junk food has allergens and like preservatives and dyes and all those sorts of things in them, which I found has does mess up my body. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, I try to avoid foods extremely high in histamine. I actually have an article on my website of some high histamine foods, but some examples include like um, tomatoes have high histamine and any kind of. Uh, spices and things like that. Some of those things have high histamine in it. I have a list, like I said, on my website if you want to see that. But I avoid any food that upsets my stomach at all. So if I start to get really, really bloated after I eat something, or if I get stomach cramps, or if I get, you know, extreme amount of gas, or diarrhea, or something crazy like that, that's a signal to me I've learned that my body's saying, hey, you know, I think what's really happening is most of your immune system is concentrated in your stomach anyway. And I think your immune system is telling you, hey, this doesn't agree with us, so don't eat this food. So I really learned to listen to my body in that way. Something bloats me up, gives me diarrhea, I back away from it. And I also avoid the major allergens out there like, you know, wheat, um, eggs, milk. A lot of, I don't eat seafood. Most of those things like that, I don't eat. So I found that all those things pretty much can cause a reaction in me. And so basically, just to give you a brief overview of what I am eating right now, the only meat I eat, I eat chicken occasionally, 
I'm eating turkey a lot right now, and I buy these frozen turkeys, and they don't have any, you know, gluten or wheat or anything on them. They're just frozen general turkeys. I think they do have, like, a sodium injection of some kind, but it doesn't seem to bother me. And what I do is I take the turkey and I thaw it out. It's a turkey breast, and I thaw it out in the refrigerator. And then I put it in the large crock pot. I've got, like, an eight-quart crock, crock pot, which is a slow cooker. And I just put it in there and add a little water overnight. And it's done the next day, and it's delicious. And then I store it in glass Tupperware, and it lasts me about two to three days. So I just have to cook that a couple times a week, and that feeds me for the whole week. And it's really easy, and I just get it out and warm it up in the microwave. And I also will eat frozen fish, and that's like salmon or tilapia, or tilapia, however you pronounce it. All those things are frozen. They're not... Uh, they don't have preservatives in them. They don't have food colorings. Every once in a while I can eat red meat, but I really have to watch it. I could eat it like one day and then back off, and it don't cause me too much trouble. But if I eat red meat consistently, I've noticed it'll start bothering my digestive system, and my immune system seems not to like it. So that's the meat I eat. And again, I, I, it's usually fro bought frozen. I thaw it out. I cook it. However, you can steam it. You can cook it on... Well, you can steam fish, you can cook the chicken and so forth on the stove or in the oven or in a crock pot. And I do not add anything to it, nothing. I eat it plain. That's it. I don't add anything to it. So I also eat vegetables. I eat corn on the cob or just regular corn. I can tolerate that pretty well. I can eat carrots. I can eat lettuce. I can eat sweet potatoes. I can eat squash and zucchini. Um, I can eat broccoli, and those are the main vegetables I eat, and usually, uh, for most of those, I just cook them, I boil them in water, or like a sweet potatoes, I put those in the crock pot with my turkey overnight, and they're really tender the next day, and I really like that, and the turkey juice is sort of absorbed into them, and I like to eat them like that. Again, I just eat these vegetables plain, like that cooked. I don't put butter on them, I don't put anything on them, just plain. Um, if you want to put anything, you could put like a little bit of salt, but you really want to watch your sodium intake. That's another thing that I did in my diet. As far as fruits, I eat strawberries, blueberries, bananas. I can eat watermelon. Um, I can eat kiwi fruits. I don't eat them a lot, but I can eat those, and I really like those. And let's see if there are any fruits that I need lately. Those are the, I can eat pineapple and so forth every once in a while, but I don't try to eat those too much because citric -y foods, I don't, it seems like if I eat a lot of those, my, my stomach and immune system seems not to like that. But I eat corn every day and I've eaten that for a long time and I've eaten carrots and I've eaten lettuce and I eat usually one large sweet potato a day, sometimes two when I'm really big in my workout routine and I need more food, I sometimes eat two. And broccoli. And again, those things are really good. I've eaten strawberries and blueberries and bananas every day. I've got a recipe on my website, by the way, for a gluten-free, dairy-free smoothie. And I just take basically a whole banana. I take some frozen strawberries and frozen blueberries. And I stick them in a blender and add just a little bit of water, just a regular blender. And mix it all up. And it is delicious. It almost tastes like it's got milk in it or something where the bananas add that creamy texture to it. But I, I usually eat two or three of those smoothies a day. So, and let's see, I eat popcorn too, and I use an air popper, and I can add, a, the only oils I will eat, I eat sunflower oil, and I'm very sparing with it, because I was eating, at one point in time, I was eating fried potatoes for every day, and I would cook it in olive oil and fried potatoes, and that was when my hives were the worst, and I was also eating salmon cakes, but I've stopped eating that because... I don't know if it's like white potatoes or something about that was really sending my hives to the roof. That was the worst they were ever was during that period of time. But but I will occasionally use a little bit of oil and pour it on my popcorn or something else, but I don't use a lot at all. Probably like a tablespoon a week, if that. And this is something else I do, and I feel like this is important for me. But I, I take probiotics, and right now I'm taking two different kinds, and I take these daily. The first kind I take is by Digestive Advantage. And it's just called like lactose defense formula. It's got the lactose or the lactase enzyme in it. And it also has, uh, I think it's a bacteria in it. And it's 
again, it's just like the good bacteria for your gut, and I feel like that helps with my digestion. And the other probiotic I take is something called like uh, Pearls, Enzymatic Pearls, I think is the brand name of it, and you can find those on Amazon. I buy them at Walmart, but you know you can get them pretty much anywhere. But those, and it's got like a blend of different bacteria in it. So those are the two probiotics I take, and I take those daily. And the reason I take those is because I feel like it just helps me digest that. It also, I feel, kind of occupies my immune system in my, in my gut, keeps it maybe not be so reactive. So that's pretty much what I do. I don't, I mean, that's just what I eat. It's plain. People look at me and like, wow, you eat healthy. I don't go out to eat. I don't. It's really awkward for when people invite me over to their home. For example, it's Thanksgiving. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to bring my own food because I can't, you know, I can't eat rolls. I can't eat all this stuff that people cook. I just can't eat it. When I do, then the same thing happens every time. My hives will usually come back within a day or two and last for a week to two weeks. And I may get an upset stomach from it. So basically when I stick to this diet, it's really strict and it's really, really difficult. It takes an extreme amount of discipline. But when I stick to it, everything just seems to work out better. And so I'll move on now and talking about exercising regularly. I have an article on my website of how to exercise with culinary urticaria. It was really hard for me in the beginning. I had to just work out for five minutes at a time. And when my hives would start, I would back off. And I used an exercise bike that I bought brand new for like 100 bucks off Walmart. And so I exercise. I also have a weight bench now. And I will work out usually three times a week. And I usually work up a great sweat. Like I said, I can just walk right in and just start picking up weights and start working out. Not even break out in hives. So... You know, I just start sweating after a while and everything. And so I feel like exercising regularly is important because it will help, you know, the blood flow and it helps just pump nutrients to different parts of your body. And then also you build up more of a, you know, complex vascular system and, you know, just overall health. We know, I mean, it reduces hormone levels and I mean, just so much that exercise will do for you for your overall health. And I feel like it's important now. I've gone periods of time without exercising. And as long as I stay true to my diet, my hives still don't come back. That's why I say I think that you know my diet's the biggest thing of all. But exercise is really important too. And so that's pretty much the conclusion of this video. I'm just going to stress it one more time. The diet is the most important thing for me that worked for me. And I've tried lots of you know antihistamines and things like that. They helped a little bit. They just kind of masked the symptoms. But all the things on this page... You know, I have a shower filter, I use lotion, I use hypoallergenic soap, I have a vaporizer and humidifier that I'll run sometimes throughout the winter, I have bed sheets to prevent against dust mites and so forth, I don't have pets, I keep, you know, I keep my house clean to cut down on dust and so forth, and I try to dress reasonably, and, you know, my diet, just eating really strict, it's hard. You know, I will cheat every once in a while. I found that, and when I say cheat, I'm saying like I'll eat something that still doesn't have the major allergens in them. Like, for example, I can go to Taco Bell about like once every two weeks. And if I just go to Taco Bell and get the crunchy tacos with no cheese, so it's just basically the corn shell with a little bit of hamburger meat. It's got seasoning and also a little bit of uh, lettuce in it. The hamburger meat has a smidge of weed, I think, in it, but if I just eat that like once every like two to three weeks and then back off, I can eat like two or three tacos, it doesn't really do much to me. So I'll do that every once in a while. And I'll treat, and I can eat like, I can eat a snack here and there, but like I said, it's just, it's kind of like the more I eat, the more that my hives will come out and they'll come back and my stomach will start to get upset. I may even get rash on my skin like I used to get these bumps on my hand and my elbow and all those things to me just said hey my immune system's in overdrive and my whole strategy was just cut down on anything that may be making my immune system even a little bit more aggressive in my body and if you ever get one of those allergy tests done like my mother had one I've never had one which is people probably find shocking but my mother had one and I was just looking at it one day and it's interesting because your body can have a different immune response to different foods and some foods will give you a slight immune response some foods will give you a strong immune response 
And so to me, my strategy is just simple. Reduce all the foods in your diet that give you any kind of an immune response. An allergy test can be helpful, but it may not pick up everything. You're just going to have to really learn to listen to your body. And yeah, again, I'm not a doctor. I would definitely recommend you talk to your doctor before you do any changes in your diet or anything. Talk to like someone that specializes in nutrition. Because one thing I've found, oh, and that's another thing I need to add to this list, is a multivitamin. I do take a multivitamin every day, which is Centrum. And what I found was when I examined my diet and started looking at all the you know, nutrients that I was getting, I realized, hey, I'm not getting enough calcium because I am lactose intolerant and I'm, I've cut out dairy. And so what I've done is I've supplemented with calcium every other day, and then I will also take a multivitamin, which has a little bit of calcium in that as well. So that's why it's really important to talk to your doctor. And by the way, before I started taking multivitamins, I would get twitchy eyes all the time. My eyes would just twitch randomly, and I would get a lot of cramps in my feet and things like that. After taking multivitamins for about a month or so, all that just slowly disappeared, and now I don't get that itch, you know, twitchy eye and all that anymore. So that's, if any of you are suffering with that, that's something to consider a multivitamin. Okay, so that's all I've got. Talk to your doctor. Be safe. I hope that helps you. I really do. It's helped me. That's why I've taken the time, an enormous amount of time to write that article, and then I've made this video. I hope it helps you. So good luck and stay healthy, and God bless you.